Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Mr. Wizard? Oh, hi, Phil. Come on in. Oh, hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi. What's going on? Well, this is my automatic bubble fountain. Something's really popping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can make these at home. Uh, all you need is one uh, fairly hard to get material. The rest of them are quite easy. And you can make this at home. And I'll, I'll show you how later. Sure keeps on going. Uh, have you ever made a cloud? A cloud? You mean like a... Uh... Well, a cloud. Well, no. I can make them instantly. Then later on, I'll make a uh, cloud instantly, just like that for you. And uh, I'll show you how to make this, as I say. Keeps on bubbling. Oh, and it'll go on uh, for quite some time. Now, uh, first, I have a very difficult thing for you to do. Over here. See this um, tin can? Think you can breathe on it? I think so. OK, breathe on it. Now, do you see what happened? Yeah, well, there's a, it's the uh, moisture from my breath. OK, do it again. What happens now? Well, when I blow on it, uh, vapor forms on it. Yeah, you can see something here. Yeah. Okay, now why? Well, there's uh, water in my breath, moisture. Well, when I blow well go on ahead, it. breathe out. I don't see anything. Well, now you need something solid, like the can. I don't see anything. Well, this is different. Yeah, it is. <laughs> in fact, that's one of the things we're going to investigate today. Why is it that when you breathe on a can that's shiny like that, you can see your breath. Haven't you done that before? On a mirror. On a mirror, yes. You can see it on a mirror. Uh, what is it about this can that makes the moisture condense on it from your breath? Oh, well, it's colder. Colder than your breath, that's right. Colder than my breath. If that's true, if I get a cold can, should the moisture condense better? Better, sure. The colder it is, the better it works. In the refrigerator are two cold cans. Can I bring them up? Now, a tall one is uh, hot, relatively. Small one is cold. Go ahead. Wow. I can't even see it. I mean, yeah. you can see it. You can't see is the it can. foggy? Sure. Yeah. Now, try. Here's away. the warm one. Some difference. Yeah, and this one is already going away. Yeah. And that one's still there? OK, now, why? Why, when you? Breathe on a can, especially if it's cold, and it seems like the colder the better, does your the moisture in your breath condense? You've done this many I've times. Been sure so many times. Well, obviously cold has something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if I can explain it to you, because that's what we're going to investigate today. Condensation. What is it that makes a gas turn into a liquid, usually little tiny drops? And in order to, to understand about that, let's pretend that these uh, little ball bearings that are sitting in here our molecules. See those ball bearings? Let me turn it on here. See those little ball bearings in there? Yeah, little balls. Well, those are molecules. And this uh, mixer is a source of heat, like a fire. When we turn this on, we're going to add heat to the molecules and make them yeah. uh, speed around. Because that's what heat is. Mm -hmm. It is. It makes, um, I know when you heat something up, it makes the molecules move faster. Okay, well, that's what we're going to do here. Now, with this knob, you can make these uh, uh, mixer things here go faster. So we're going to add more heat. Mm -hmm. So you do that and see what happens to the molecule. Go ahead. Now, uh, what happened? This, in this form, liquid. And in this form, what? A gas. What? A gas. A gas, that's right. OK, now, what our problem is, to use this model, how are we going to explain what happens when that gas condenses back to a liquid again? Well, if this is the heat, yeah. the mixer, the more heat you give, the more they're moving around. Mm -hmm. So somehow we have to turn down heat, take away the heat. Or cool off these molecules up here somehow, slow them down. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. theoretically, when we turn this on and they're flying around out here, we can't see them. And the more oh, you can't see the gas, invisible. You know, yeah. these are invisible. So we've got to get a couple of them together so we can see it. Actually, maybe more than just a couple. Well, in reality, what happens as you s cool down the gas or the vapor, they condense on a nucleus. So I'm going to pretend that this magnet here is a nucleus and hold it right here. Now you turn on the gas and watch what happens. Now, 
What happened? Well, they, they jumped up, but they, they held on to this. We slowed them down. We slowed them down so using magnetism. Well, it's, it's, this was taking away heat, slowing them down, yeah. stopping them. So we now got uh, several of them together so we can see it. Mm -hmm. In this case, they got so many, they ran down the side. It was yeah. like they, they got heavier, and, yeah, they, like and this magnet couldn't hold them anymore, so they just dropped. So they, and it dropped, and it's a drop. Drop like of water. Drop of like water, a drop yeah. of water. So that's the explanation now. If we can somehow get the moisture in this air to cool off, we can get them to clump together, and they'll form a little drop, and then we can see it. Mm -hmm. Now, how about the moisture in this room? Is there moisture here in this air? Sure, in all air. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we cool it off and get it uh, out so we can see it? Well, if we took down the temperature of the room, uh, I guess if we got low enough, there'd be moisture all over well, the There's a thermometer sitting over there. Let's see if you can... Uh, make a guess. Here is a thermometer, and here is a little, there's the sensing device of it. Mm -hmm. So right now it's in the air. What is the temperature? Oh, it reads about between, I guess about 77 degrees. 77 degrees, okay. Now, if we take uh, one of these cans and place it in here, we'll have it at about 77 degrees. Now, I'm going to pour some water in here and put some ice in here and stir it up so that we begin to get this can cold, and you know what's going to happen. It's going to con moisture moisture's going to condense well, it, right? On the outside, right? yeah. At what temperature, do you think? Well, it's now 77. If freezing is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. um, it should be just a little bit over freezing, because we don't want the water to freeze on the outside, but it has to get pretty low for it to form. So about 34 degrees okay. Fahrenheit. Here's a pad where you can put down the temperature as we go. You watch the temperature and the can. And watch what they, you know, as soon as it forms, you read the temperature. So you better watch them both. All right. And I'll start pouring in uh, cold water about halfway up. And now I'll start putting in some ice. Now we'll see What's what, the te what happened to the temperature when I put the cold water in? It went up one degree. It did? Couldn't be very cold. <laughs> I guess not. Unless maybe we just put the thermometer. Okay, now I'll stir oh, it. Oh, there it goes down fast. It's already down 70. Mm, 64, but nothing is on yet. Should be a while before it starts to form. Won't, won't I be able to see it if I go like that? Yeah, well, I mean, just keep, keep checking. Head. Keep checking, you see. To 50. You said 30, 34? I see it. There it is. What is it? Oh, it was just about 40, when I first saw it, about 46. 46. Mm -hmm. I guess you were kind of off a little bit. Um, Would you write down 46 up here? Right. Because as close as you can tell, it was 46 degrees when the fog formed, but obviously the temperature was in the process of moving at the time when it formed. So it's really hard to pretty tell. Pretty hard to tell, yeah, but why don't we do this? I'll put this back in here again, and now here's some warm water. I'll <coughs> gradually warm this up, and you tell me the point at which it disappears. Oh. Well. What do you think it'll be? It shouldn't be too much more because if I caught it right when it started at 46 degrees, well, it should, as soon as we start adding the warm to it, it should, it should disappear. disappear. Again. Okay. I'll so see I'll, if I caught it. I'll right. um, pour a little water in and stir. Okay, and you watch the temperature. Now, but yeah. I stopped it at about 54, I guess. Okay, well now I'm right, 54 above that. Okay, now you can subtract the two and find the difference. Okay, now let's assume that we were a little late here, mm -hmm. a little late here, and a little early here, so we can ha let's go halfway between the two. What's half of that? Four. Four, and so now add four to 46. 50. Okay. Halfway between is 50. So uh, that means that if we took the temperature in this room and cooled it down to 50 degrees, what would happen? Well, we'd get dew on top of the table. Well, we, we, the moisture would come out of the air. It, mean, it might mean we'd have a, a, a cloud in here. If we cooled the table off to 50 degrees, oh, and then, then it would come condense. The table, and of course, what do, you, do you know what that point's called there? The dew point. Dew point, that's right. And that's how you determine it. Now, why do we form dew at night, then? Well, as the air drops, the air temperature drops. Oh, careful. Where does the dew fall? 
Oh, on the ground. So yeah. the ground cools off. Well, there could be some of each. If the moisture forms in the air, it would fall down to the ground. But also, there's a good possibility that the ground would cool off faster than the air, so the moisture might condense on and it. the moisture would go there. So a combination. Because in the morning, you can see on the grass and on the uh, plants. And now, uh, have you ever made rain? Made rain? Yeah. No. Well, I'm a rainmaker. And there's my rainmaking machine. See, down below is, uh, what does that look like to you? Looks like a uh, hot plate. Well, it uh, may look like a hot plate, but that's really the sun hitting the ocean and evaporating the water. Okay? Okay. Now, up here we have vapor. Yes, right. Disappearing into the air. Okay, well, I'm going to collect that in my special tool, and you watch what happens almost instantly. Oh, there it goes. See it? You can see it coming up. The vapor is coming up, and it's, it's condensing on the, It's condensing on the side of this uh, tube, isn't it? Coming out the top now. Yeah, thank you. I'll close up the top now, and you watch right down here what begins to happen. Oh, well, the... What is that fog there? Just like on the can, isn't it? Yeah, but the, the drops, um, it's forming lots of drops. Light, little, tiny, tiny drops. You can barely... Now, keep your eye on them, because... As the moisture continues to go up here, and they the little tiny drops continue to form, they begin to bunch together and get bigger and bigger and bigger. In fact, you can see them getting bigger right in here now. Well, it must have been like um, in, in the demonstration of the uh, molecules. Right, they, cl I mean, they, they cling they together and get bigger and bigger. Now, pretty soon... Oh, yes, you can really see it. See, they're getting quite large in here now. Pretty soon, uh, what happens when one of them gets so big that the uh, forces holding it against the side of the tube are no longer strong enough to hold it. It's going to fall it's down. It's going to start falling down, and pretty soon we're going to have rain running down here. This is what happens in a cloud, too. The droplets get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's see. They're, they're really getting pretty big over here. Down at the you, bottom yeah, you first, wa though. You watch right in here. Yeah, down on the lower part in this case, because the vapor is condensing, you see, right from here. Mm -hmm. Watch it. Here they come. You, you can you can see them. It's like they're popping almost. Yes. Well, they're 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 you know um, coalescing or coming together and and uh, running into each other and forming a bigger and bigger drop. And that's what that motion is that you see there. Is that is that why? It's, it's, now this is just uh, it's heating up and it's rising. Right. So that we're connect we're condensing the moisture right here. All right. Now let's any time now it's about ready to rain. I think I see it starting down this side. Yeah. Over on that side. Mm-hmm. Naturally, it's always in the back someplace. <laughs> now, what's, uh, this is just like oh, rain. There, there went one. There went one right there. Eric. Starting to rain. Starting to rain. Yeah. Well, I, I put this uh, jello dish down at the bottom around the uh, flask so it would catch the, uh, oh, see down here, catching the raindrops. There was another one. You can see they're going to drip down in here into the jello dish. Oh, now, this water we have, this is like rainwater, isn't yeah, it? Sure, there's rain. Well, it's like distilled water, because that's what we're doing. We're distilling it. We're it's a long it way around, yeah, isn't it? a long it? way around. But anyway, there we've got rain. There's another good drop right there. It just mm -hmm. went down. Yeah, we're really starting to collect so, it down. So eventually we could make sort of jello down there. If we just had the jello in there, we'd make it with distilled water. There well, it's now, really beginning now to rain. Now we have instant water. Yeah. Now so far we've cooled... See, if, we, if I can get up. <laughs> so far we've cooled off um, the, the vapor with ice cubes. In this case with the... Uh, heat, uh, we took away the heat with this uh, tube. This time, let's do it in a little different method. Let's do it now with, uh, with taking away pressure. Remember that instant cloud I told you about? Mm -hmm. Well, come on around here. I'll show you how to make an instant cloud. See this bottle? Yeah. Well, down here on the uh, chair is a pump. And when I turn on the pump and put it on up here, I can make an instant cloud. In order to see it better, I'll turn this light on. And you will look right there in that bottle. Now, watch. Wow. There it is. It is an instant cloud. Instant cloud. And watch me make it disappear. I don't get it. Well, all right, let me get it gone and watch. Here it comes again. How do you do that? Well, let me, first let me get it. See, here's a pump. And see what's happening to it? Yeah. It blows. Air. Air. So we can now put air under pressure in here. Well, pushing it together. Pushing right? it together. Inside the bottle, you see that liquid down there? Water. No, it's alcohol. R ordinary rubbing alcohol. I uh, use that because it's, it evaporates quite easily. You know, you can, you can smell the alcohol yeah. quickly. So that means it evaporates easily. That means that there's alcohol vapor in the air. When I push down on it like this with the, 
with the pump, I'm compressing all the air in there. When I suddenly release it, the air has to get heat from someplace as it expands, and it takes it away from the moisture that's in there, and now cools it off. And when you cool off the air, you condense the moisture into it. And that's why, well, it's the, the same principle as the engine. Same. We get a Only cloud. we cool it this time, we're taking the pressure away. Yeah, I, I never hmm? realized it could be done like that, but just, uh, just taking the pressure away automatically cools right. it. Right. By putting the pressure on it, you... Uh, now, you can try this at home. I don't know how well it'll work, or it depends on how hard you can blow. Put a little alcohol in the bottom of a bottle and blow. But you can't blow as hard as I can. Yeah. And it's a good idea to have a light coming from the side to pick up all the brightness. Now, what? I'll see if I can make a nice, good, dense one by leaving it on, getting the pressure to build up as much as possible, and then releasing it quickly. That is, it's coming out the mm. top just shot somebody. So, isn't that, an, isn't that an instant cloud? That's an instant cloud. In fact, not only is it, in, is it an instant cloud, but it's a cloud chamber. A homemade cloud chamber. Isn't that a chamber? Yeah. yeah. And isn't that a cloud? <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's a cloud chamber. In fact, uh, I'm not being facetious, this is the way one of the cloud chambers works. You know what a cloud chamber is? Well, what, I've what? seen pictures of it. And yeah, what are they supposed like, to do? Well, you can see the way a cloud, you, you, take away the pressure. Well, the cloud, the cloud chamber is used to study what happens to atomic particles when they go through the cloud. In fact, this system right here is employed over here with this uh, cloud chamber right here. This thing. Mm -hmm. We got there's a pump there. Uh, see here, this tube mm -hmm. corresponds to the hand, the hand pump instead of the electric one over there. Yeah. And inside on this um, felt ring is alcohol. Oh, so that's like the alcohol. So what's inside? Vapor. Vapor. Oh, yeah, that's alcohol same vapor. as that one. Now, you see it's transparent. There's a glass on the back, too. And right down there in the middle, you see that little bump sticking up? Yeah. There's radioactive material in there. Oh, well, that's where it's different so than that one. So, that's quite different. I'll turn the light on in the back here so we can now shine a light through it just like I did before. Mm -hmm. And now, if I pull up on this pump, I will take the air out of here and cool it off one, because it'll only have to expand, mm -hmm. and we'll have a cloud. Now, you watch what happens. Oh, it's like... It was shooting up. You can just see the now, air. Now I'll, I'll let the air back in. What? Now, down here, with these radioactive uh, particles coming up, they also condense the air, just like the little uh, pieces of dust and whatnot that I talked about before, where the, oh, the moisture has to condense on. Now, as these radioactive materials go through, through here, they condense the moisture behind the particle, and you see a vapor trail. Was that why you yeah. see it? But because the radioactive material was shooting it out all the uh, time. Up, yes, and it's shooting it all the time. We can't see it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Only when the cloud forms do we see it. Now watch, I'll try it again. That was mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah, good and one. then when you finish it, um, watch then. goes down. Wipe it away. Kind of reminds me of Aladdin and his magic lamp, you know? Yeah. The genie appears and then and disappears this back into yeah. the bottle again. Now, this is called a a uh, Wilson cloud chamber after uh, Mr. Wilson man who invented it. Uh, and it, it's been an extremely useful tool to scientists. In fact, he got the Nobel Prize for... Well, it's amazing the way you can, you can really see Here, it. Here, you want to try it? Go ahead. Sure. Now, do it as fast as you can, so you cool it off as much as possible. Very good. Going up. <laughs> now, notice how these, these trails disappear quickly. You know, they sink down right away. Yeah. There are various methods of solving this, and scientists uh, have developed uh, cloud chambers in which the cloud lasts a little longer, and they can also uh, set up a camera and take a picture of it mm -hmm. so that they can keep a permanent record and study. In fact, do it again, and then look at this uh, picture. Go ahead, do that. Now, see how this picture, how these tracks are? It's not the same kind of cloud chamber, but these tracks are similar to the ones that you just made over here. You mean these, this is... A picture of what it looks like. Well, a picture of. of a different one. And these are the tracks that are formed, and they can study what happens when they can follow a particle over here and see what happens when it hits another particle. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's on the back of the photograph, uh, this is one of the first cloud chamber pictures obtained with the Cosmotron in the operation at Brookhaven National Laboratory in Upton, New York. So there you see... And they can trace it, though, can't they? Mm -hmm. Hate to have that job. Okay, well, anyway, that's probably the first time you've ever seen real vapor trails caused by... Uh, uh, but radioactive that's particles. Radioactive You've thing. seen vapor trails before because way high up in the clouds, when an airplane flies, sometimes the conditions are right to form one of these vapor trails, and airplanes do it. Well, the jets do it yeah, when the they jet. take off. So anyway, there you see now how 
scientists have been able to use this idea of getting things cool enough to condense and then getting a particle to condense on it. So far, we've cooled things off just a little bit. What would happen if we got this vapor uh, and cooled it off a whole lot, let's say 100 degrees below zero? Wow, Fair enough. it would really... Uh, really get cold yeah. and really condense. Well, come on here, let's do that. I don't know what you're going to use for it. Well, over here is some water boiling. Yeah. In fact, you can see just a little bit of the sort of cloud forming vapor. up here. But there's a lot of, obviously, this m air here is all full of of uh, moisture. In fact, you put yeah. your hand over it, you can feel it moist. Yeah, even well, you the, can't the see vapor it. is... Let's cool moist. some of that off. Oh, here. See the cloud? Yeah, but... Uh... I'm cooling that off, not with ordinary ice, but with a special kind of ice called dry ice. Wow, this stuff really goes up. Now, what is that white stuff? It's... Well, is it from the it's ice? Water, it's water vapor. It's, wa it's the water vapor. Yes. But gee, it's different than uh, what it was before. Well, it's not the moisture that was in the air necessarily, but it's in the moisture that was formed by the carbon dioxide bubble when the bubble formed underwater. It cooled off the water vapor and formed... Uh, Th this feels kind of moist, too. Yes. In fact, let's prove it. Let's prove that that white stuff is not water vapor from the air and is, or is not the carbon dioxide uh, vapor. In other words, you might think that the carbon dioxide was this white stuff, because that, you know, dry ice is, car is solid carbon dioxide. It could be. And I put it in the water and melted it. Although it doesn't really melt. Here. In fact, here's another piece, and here's a hot frying pan. If I put the dry ice in there and we get that fog over there, we could suspect that it's maybe carbon dioxide vapor. Sure, it makes sense, because then it would form the same kind of thing. It doesn't, does it? It's kind of floating around in there. Why is it making that noise? It's vibrating very fast. Well, because the gas, the hot frying pan, the, the gases uh, are forming. Will you please be quiet? The hot gases coming out from the bottom are trying to escape, and so they jiggle it up and down. But it, the thing, it, there. it kind of floats around. Well, it, isn't, it, it isn't like if you put a piece of ice there, it sits there and it melts. But well, you see, because this piece of ice is changing directly to a gas, carbon dioxide gas. In fact, that's what's making a lubricant out of it. And watch if I, I let me. Just keeps on going around and around. Hey. It doesn't seem to be gliding on the pan, though. That's yeah, right. see, it's because it's, it's riding on a thin layer of carbon dioxide gas. So when you now take dry ice and put it into water, that white stuff that you see is water vapor. It has to be. Yeah. Because certainly well, you can see just a little bit of it there. I don't know if you can notice it around the, uh, the dry ice. See it? Uh, it's coming off. Uh, it's condensing some of the moisture from the air. Well, now, if we made a little bit of a, a fog over here, what would happen if we took this, uh, this hot water, instead of getting just a little fog like this, let's really fill a whole big container full of dry ice and pour this hot water on it. Then we'd have a real cloud. We really have. Yeah. Right, let's do that. Back over there on the floor, I have a container full of dry ice. Let's pour this hot water on it. Get it out of the corner? Yeah, put it, put it over there in the middle. And I've got this. Wait, I want to get some more uh, hot water. Okay. Th this is all dry That's ice? That's all dry ice in there. Uh, now, if we put hot water on it, we should get a nice cloud. Oh, boy. Look at that. Wow. Look at the floor, Mr. Wizard. Isn't that something? It... <laughs> you feel like you're in heaven? Yeah, I, you know, they... It was a play like this, and they, they have this a lot. Sure, well, they used to use this effect in, in, uh, in the theater and in, in movies when they wanted to make a cloud. They could get dry ice, and they could get a whole cloud going all over the floor, and you could, you could walk in and it's see... It's like it. a blanket of it. Seriously? Yeah. Just rub that on In fact, I don't know, have you ever been in an airplane way high in the sky? Yeah, it does. It looks, it looks like, a, like, like, like we're on top of a cloud bank, isn't it? Like an overcast. Well, we are. And this is a yeah, cloud. It is a cloud. It just that's is right. a low cloud. And we're making. Where is this moisture coming from? That's on the floor. From the water. From the hot water. That's from right. The hot water. Which isn't so hot anymore because of that. Oh, I'll put in some more. And there it goes. It bubbles isn't over. It great. Yeah. Looks like a lot of little volcanoes. This is a. The whole place is in a blanket now. In fact, 
if you if you uh, well here um, take the glove and wait and wave at it over there just a little bit just to get there you go. wow it just <laughs> it glides along it really makes you feel funny looking down on it now let me pour the rest of it on yeah. Your whole hand can just disappear. I notice this. when you put your hand in, it also feels a damp, moist. Because well, you're really putting your hand in a cloud. There. <laughs> now, if you can put it out of the way, just, I don't know if you can see it. You see each little, each little piece of carbon dioxide, or uh, a dry ice down there, uh, just bubbling up. Um, yeah, forming uh, this uh, water water vapor. Well, anyway, here we're making a cloud by getting the water vapor to condense because we're cooling it off so much with dry ice. Mm -hmm. Right? We also uh, cooled it off by letting it condense on the side of a tube, and we made rain. Yeah. And that's what happens up up in the, in the um, sky. We also over here cooled it off by lowering pressure, didn't we? That's right, with the Pushing down, pump. Out, taking the pressure out. away, we cool it off. Instant cloud. Instant cloud, that's right. In each case, what, I, what we are trying to see is that when you cool off a vapor or a gas, the particles that are suspended in it will condense and form a little tiny drop, which you can see, which you normally call water vapor. And it's extremely important to scientists when they're, they're studying uh, uh, radioactive materials in a cloud chamber. Well, okay, well, one other thing I have to ask. What? You said you were going to show me how to do that uh, bubble fountain. Oh, all right. Come on, I'll show you how to do the bubble fountain. I think maybe you kind of suspect. Uh, as I walk through yeah, the Yeah, as you cloud. walk through the cloud. <laughs> Here's how to make a bubble fountain. Yeah, it's quite simple. All you have to do is get warm water, hot water, and put a little detergent in it. Oh, that, well, that's the... That's one of the secret ingredients. Just put a little detergent in it like that. I think I know the other now. What? It's the dry ice. Dry ice. And then put some pieces of dry ice. Be careful that you don't touch it because it can um, freeze your moisture in your fingers. And if you do that, you will have a nice automatic bubble fountain like that. Our and what are those bubbles. white bubbles filled with? They're filled with the uh, water, vapor the water vapor condensed from the moisture in the bottle. Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University.